how you have been through your apps, not only on your iPad, your iPhone, but let's talk about Mac OS. And yes, that is going to be, I feel, the one of the biggest leaps that we have because Mac OS, I think for the first time, really is going to be uh, Mackie. Uh, Mac, <laughs> the, no. the Mac, it's starting to transition. They're not coming in all in one, but they even more so now more than ever. They, every iteration, every year, it's just a little bit more uniform approach from the way the icons look, the way the screens are, the widgets. It's more and more becoming easier to bring over apps from iPad and um iPhone into the Mac OS and they share a common ecosystem. I can hand you a uh, iPhone version of iMovie and you can start editing. But if I handed you the Mac and said, try iPhone, you and try iMovie, you start to have that familiarity with that. And also other apps cross platform has that familiarity. But I think even more so now, Mac OS is uh, Mac OS Big Sur, which is Mac OS 11. It, they, so many new changes in it, they finally moved up to the next iteration. And we just, the, the, the synergy, I guess, if you want to call it, and I hate using that word, but the synergy is there in ways it hasn't been, well, it's always well, been there, but it continues the synergy now. Synergy to the app, to the Apple ecosystem. That's mm -hmm. what it really feels like. They, we've heard that terminology a lot. And that's one of the things that it's, really apple excels at to me it's just no one could touch them in this in this category because it's like yes if you go ahead and get just an iphone or just an ipad you can experience why apple is apple you know they're fast they're great they're awesome they're easy to use you don't have to worry about you know all that viruses and so on but really it doesn't exactly speak volumes for Apple if you only have one device. And really, if you have more than one device, if you go ahead and try to go ahead and get app, uh, iPad, iPhone, iMac, Apple Watch, whatever you go ahead, the more you stack on, it's the more that Apple ecosystem clicks in. And one of the things that I remember when they added the unified copy and paste, that if you were on your iPad and you copy something, you could paste it on your iPhone, you could paste it on your Mac. To me, when they first announced that back in the day, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because this is not something that you can easily do with any other company. Well, the same thing here, I noticed there was something different about this WWC is that it was kind of a circle of life thing going on. Mm -hmm. So stick with me here. Like it was like the, let's go back to the iPad for a second. The iPad did get a sidebar view. Where have we seen that before? Mac OS, Mac OS, you have that sidebar view. So to me, that was the iPad taking something from Mac and be like, you know what? I could go ahead and add this in and still be unique, but give, my um, users something familiar with the Mac OS. And then Mac was just like, you know, iPhone have all these amazing corners, curves and so on. And you know, the way that everything looks, let's get that feel of the iOS over into Mac, Mac OS as well. You know, and then we have seen iOS do so many more things that I like a phone shouldn't be able of doing like it literally is a mini computer at this point. And it, computer but a very powerful one um so to me it's like they're all learning from each other you know and and getting that apple ecosystem in there the way the um siri now will work in small on across pretty much all the systems and everything the way the fact that you know you have that transparency remember when they added that to the iphone like mm -hmm. there was so many more features that many people i saw was just like wait a minute you know, pull back a little bit, but at the same time, the more you think about it, the more incredible that is. And then that's where it leads into the Apple Silicon, you know. Uh, <laughs> you transitioned very well into that. Yes. Apple Silicon, yes, I will let you, because when we saw you know, that, we knew this was coming with their ARM processors, but go ahead and I'm gonna let you talk about this one because this is the game changer. It is, it is. And it's, it's something that they said they're going to take about two years to transition. So there's there's so many different 
so many different thoughts on this. And I, even me, as a big Apple fan myself, I am very excited, but also a little bit worried, but also very excited about this. Because when I look at the fact that Apple is using Intel, right now it, it's making it so if you, let's say, for example, if you use VR, like the Oculus Quest, you know, you can get programs to easily run it because the fact that the app Apple app uh, Macs are using Intel. Well, if they're changing over to their own processors and everything like that, it is going to take a minute for developers to go ahead and transition. The good news is, is that they are coming out with things such as Universal 2, Xcode, and more to make the transition as seamless as possible. So this way, things can work a lot faster from the Intel computer base onto the silicon base. Let, let's let's back up just a moment a bit. What does the Apple Silicon really mean? And I mean that to the layman's term is okay. they're right now they're on Intel processors that they Intel. use for all their uh, MacBook Pros, their iMacs, their iMac Pros, their Mac Minis. And what does that mean when they say Apple Silicon? What you know? Break it down. They're they're new to the Mac platform, but okay. we've seen them before. We right now, before. they're on the i threes, the i fives, the i sevens, and so on that you can see across almost any laptop that you see at Best Buy. But what they're about to switch to is what's inside these babies. So, in other words, as we know, they're iPhones and iPads are using A processors, the A13, the A13 Bionic, the A12, and the Apple Fusion processors and so on. So in other words, they're using their very own chipsets rather than using Intel, which, by the way, is very good because if you think about it, Apple has studiedly and just mind-blowingly every year made their iPhone more and more and more powerful. And that's one of the things that they mentioned. They said that the, they have shown where they could continue to make something more and more powerful, but also more energy efficient. And one thing about it, I've seen, um, I think his tech, uh, tech Tynus, I can't remember his name, I'm bad with names, but he mentioned and what a lot of people with um, Macs and so on have noticed that after certain temperature thresholds, the Intel processors would actually start to slow down and throttle, which means that because of the heat that the system is under, it will slow down its processing and give you weaker performance. Well, anybody with an iPhone would know that even though your iPhone can get pretty hot, especially out there walking, playing Pokemon Go, it still will go ahead and give you 100% of the power. Like, it's so amazing that many people are baffled about how the iPhone doesn't throttle under such heavy temperature demands, which is very good news for these new computers because of the fact that now we'll be able to go ahead and do multi, like they show three 4K video editing, and it was still going so fast and smooth. To to think about that A13, and all the all that they showed us was running an A13Z, the exact same one of the new iPads, yes, yes. Are running entire computer programs, which also kind of back it up again to the iPad for a second. We should be getting more AAA games, especially with this eight-core GPU. I really do feel like if it runs on a Switch or original Xbox, it should be able to run an iPad easily at this point. So iPad really could step up and make a big entrance into the video game world. But also, let's go back to the iMac. Same thing. iMacs haven't exactly been the best name to say in game industry. I know me personally, as a Mac gamer, when I showed up to a LAN party and everybody had their custom, you know, computers <laughs> and so on, and I'm like, hey, here's my, you know, Mac. They look at me like, boy, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, right. they're like, Mac ain't game for gaming. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on a second. I do have, you know, the dedicated graphics card that actually blew uh, like mm -hmm. actually make games look great. So Mac is for gaming, but developers just aren't hitting that 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 those Mac gamers. I feel like with this type of new technology that is familiar but new to Mac, I feel like the transition for games can be there and make actually app development much more easier. But I do feel that they need to come out with not only the A13 Bionic Z, which will be great for most mac users but there is a small amount of mac users that probably be wanting like a 
A1415 or so, you know, or a special version of it that is much more graphic capable to run games like VR and high demand 4K gaming and 4K, like 8K, 8, 8K editing as well. Because we do know that for media purposes, the Mac is like none other. Mac rules in media. But I feel like they do need to come out with something more intense. So this way we can have that, you know, high end market. But also for those who just do regular CPU thing, that A13 is way more powerful than enough. So with the creative prof- with the creatives market, they're sending out custom um, developer development kits, Mac Minis with the custom AZ12, I think. And I could be wrong with the um, the numbering. The what it means is you're going to get a lot of cross pollinization between your iOS apps and your Mac apps. And when the new Macs come out with the Apple Silicon chips in them you'll be able to run some of your favorite iOS apps on your Mac, which I think is pretty darn, this is pretty nice. Also with what you talked about earlier with the performance and the temperature, they're used to squeezing a lot onto a small SOC system on chip. But really what that means is your iPhone is very small. Your iPad is a little bit bigger. So they're getting they kind of have perfected this plan. They can control, yeah, they can control the distribution. They can control when these chips are ready. They don't have to worry about third-party manufacturers to roll out yearly iterations of new hardware. I think that's good. Also Mm -hmm. for gaming, they said that it's going to take a couple year transition. So your Intel-based Mac products are not going away. And they did, I think it was Rosetta 2, where it will be able to just um, recompile it for Apple Silicon, and then they might go in and make some little changes. So really what this means is a lot of the apps that we use on iOS will be able to be ported directly to the Mac with little or no changes, and you're just going to get that. It's going to be more powerful. It's going to be maybe a little bit thinner. It's going to be more accessible. And really, like what they used to say it just works. Specialist mm-hmm. Max as well. We got because think about it; they less room for processing because of the fact that they've been using these smaller chips. So I think finally we can get more of a more newer design of yes. Mac. Yes. Yes. Because we've been looking at the same design for years. I don't, like one of the thing about it is the fact that as someone who's been, you know, as as you know, when you purchase a Mac, whether it's iMac, MacBook. Air, there has been changes, but over the years, if you look at it, over the years has been changes. But sometimes year to year, we haven't got that big redesign. Our Macs yeah. still look the same. A MacBook Air, when it's closed, look exactly like the MacBook Air from like I don't mm-hmm. even know, like eight years ago. You know, so I'm hoping that these new Apple complete processors bring along a new design new ideas as well we've seen the laptop world change so much over the top we've seen the desktop world change so much over the last few years so i'm hoping that this does give the design team you know a little edge as well like you know we don't need to like we don't need to have this much room for this component let's go ahead and switch this around like like think about how excited we are when the iphone x came out like that was such a game changer think about how many phones now had that that extra you know notch or chin or so on um or the now samsung galaxy went to the hole punch outs but look how much have changed since those x's came out you know I feel like this could be it. This could be that big X moment for mm-hmm. their computer line. I feel like we could, like, you notice that they showed us these um, Mac OS running on Macs that look normal. And then they said, yes. oh, by the way, this yes. is already running as is, perfectly fine and smooth. I was like, everybody's like, what? Like, <laughs> this is a theoretical technology. We're actually using it now. But we yes. will go through a transition period to make everything nice and smooth. You yeah, know, all the so, demos, you, all the demos you've seen today on the Mac, yeah. have been running on our new Apple Silicon. That, that blew me oh, away. I was like, oh, okay. Wow, I mean, you've already seen this. No big deal. It'll yeah. be out in the fall. Yeah.